Hello, brothers and sisters in Christ. Today is Sunday, July the 26th, and it is now 3.26 p.m. And I thought that it would be good to share this dream. Well, actually, it was two dreams that Jerry Tony had. He calls his channel now Watchman slash Pastor Jerry Tony. He had a dream that involved Obama, and he said Michelle was in it. And they had photos laid out on a bed and in piles, in sections. And talking about when should they expose which pile first. Long story short, it's about bringing Trump down for his past. The Bible tells us, be sure your sins will find you out. And they will. And this is going to devastate a lot of people that are Trump supporters. Jerry Tony has a lot more viewers than I have. And uh, 23,000. And this, since yesterday, has 6,676 views. And my video will probably add maybe 150 or so. But if you like it, it'll get out to others. Of course, if you don't, you don't. The man had the dreams. And they, he said he knows they're from God because he can remember them. I know that feeling when I've had dreams from God. I still to this day can tell you the dream from beginning to end, every detail, and I never wrote it down. That's how powerful dreams from God are, especially if you're not used to it. Well, in the second dream, he was at a 7-Eleven. And someone approached him and asked him, was he Terry Joni, the uh, Jerry Tony, the YouTube preacher? And he told him, yes, he was. He ended up with about an audience of 20 uh, getting to preach to them. Oh, she had asked him, do you think the rapture will be at the Feast of Trumpets? And he told her what he thought. He said the chances of it being this year. See, he fully believes it's going to be the Feast of Trumpets. The next thing to be fulfilled on the menorah is the Feast of Trumpets. I forget the other. Oh, uh, I have one. I forget the other. Um. Feasts, feast days that are on the, there's tabernacles, and what's the one in between? Well, it doesn't matter. The, the point is, I used to always believe that when I started learning about the menorah and what Jesus has fulfilled thus far, that the Holy Spirit fulfilled Pentecost which is the spirit of Jesus. And some people are saying the feast at the far end has to be fulfilled and then it comes back in toward the middle. Well, you know, I, I don't remember the reasoning and I don't remember why, but that's what some people think. Others believe the next one in line is the Feast of Trumpets and it's next to be fulfilled. We just di didn't know the year. But from what the dreams and the confirmations of the people who have had the dreams, like Pastor Dana, in the first dream, I believe it was the first dream, or it might have been the second one, he had underlined September. 
And then when he got to November, he saw a fist punch through it. Do y'all remember that? Well, anyway, um, it's possible. And when he woke up from his dream, this is the scripture that came to his mind. I'm going to play it from there. But as I woke up, there was this one verse of scripture that rang out to me intently. There are many people right now who do not believe in a pre-tribulation rapture. And that's fine. You believe whatever you choose to. But remember this, you only get what you believe. If you want to stay here for the tribulation, you go ahead. And a lot of people have come... Okay, see, I don't think he understands what I've come to... I have come to believe is that we're already in the beginning of the tribulation. We're not in the great tribulation, which starts after the rapture. Then somehow Obama comes on the world stage as the world leader. He won't be introduced as the Antichrist, of course. But those of you who do not, are not part of the first rounders. Okay? I'd like to believe everybody on my channel is going because you stuck around and you believe what I've been teaching but not everybody goes the first round most people aren't ready Mo the church, the people sitting in the pews, they're not being taught they're not being uh, prepared like last night when I was on live chat with a, a channel uh, Team Jesus that I follow on Brideon, okay, someone s spoke up and said they had a dream, it would have been the night before last, about um, being in a church and all of a sudden the sky turned red, somebody looked out and they saw hordes of demons like in a physical body carrying uh, battle axes and other types of weapons of uh, swords I think maybe the kind you would see where they would cut people's heads off with them you know that kind rushing to this church and the church instead of Everybody starting to pray and plead the blood of Jesus and rebuking the demons. They were all scrambling all over each other trying to get out, find a way out where they could hide from these demonic creatures. Okay, this clearly represents some left behind people and they were all in this church and the church was full. They're not prepared. They didn't know their Ephesians 6 armor to put on their armor of God or they should have had it on already. Didn't know about pleading the blood of Jesus. They're not being taught. They are not being taught spiritual warfare. They're not being taught they have to live holy. They're not being taught they have to repent and so forth and so on. And how many people do you know that have turned their backs on you because you said that Jesus has been telling us to come out of her, my people. And they're still in there. And they're not being taught right. They may be taught, being taught about Jesus and loving one another and doing good deeds. And tithing, they're still preaching the Old Testament law of tithing because they want that money. And oh, it's tax deductible. They all know that. They don't have to preach that. Because they get a statement every year that says if you donate when you don't, but says you've donated X number of dollars this year. This is for your taxes. And so you have to save that to prove you pay that much to this organization or church. Jasper, stop that. 
please don't tear up the furniture. Okay. Okay. Now, so that was his second dream. And he said, I've never had two dreams that I knew were from the Lord that I could remember like this. And um, so apparently God wanted this out. Not only is Trump, Trump is fixing to be exposed for who he really is. They're going to bring him down with his past. I'm sure he doesn't do these things. Well, I can't say I'm sure. Obama did a lot of things when he was president that he still did back in his past. That was that was proved. His secret service, somebody in his secret service told on him that he did cocaine and smoked cigarettes. I mean, that was to me no big deal. So what if your president smokes cigarettes? But the other stuff, you know, totally illegal. And it's not just him. But we know who he is. I'm just saying that got exposed. Well, now... They're fixing to expose Trump according to his dream. If it comes to pass, he's showing a picture he found from his past like one of the pictures in the dream. So anyway, I'll let it go at that if you want to watch it. Um, Okay, I didn't finish playing it. I stopped it because he started saying, if you don't believe in a pre-tribulation rapture, you won't go. You will get what you believe. Well, I think we're closer to the midpoint because the, what I came to realize, I'm sure a lot of you did also, the Antichrist only gets three and a half years or four and a half, 42 months, however it's put out. I can't remember because they use time, times, and half time, which is three and a half years. There's the words 42 months are used or three and a half years are used. So whatever it is, he only gets three and a half years. And it's Jesus coming to earth that when the battle of Armageddon takes place, he and... uh the false prophet, the Pope, get thrown into the lake of fire. That's how they're ended. The devil gets chained up in the, the bottomless pit. The lid is put on and chained on, or however it's worded. And he stays there for a thousand years. While Jesus starts helping whoever has survived... So not everybody's wiped out. The earth is not totally wiped out. So any visions or dreams or prophecies that says the whole entire earth is destroyed. Well, it may be destroyed in that buildings and crops are destroyed. And it has to be rebuilt. Okay, so it could mean that. But I've seen one where it was totally uninhabitable well I just think that means there's no buildings to live in well you know the pioneers started out in America with nothing they had to start planting stuff they had to start go chop down trees to build their log cabins and it can be done again and it'll be done better because Jesus will be in charge and he'll have us helping them he'll have People from heaven that want to, I believe, people that were carpenters, people that were plumbers, people that were have all that knowledge and they'll get even more on and how to do it better and quicker. Just like the fallen angels. I believe that's why the Greeks had had those Indoor plumbing, they were bathhouses. They were like big, huge swimming pools indoors with fountains and water. We learned it in art history, the intricate plumbing that they had. Then what happened to it? How come there wasn't plumbing in the Middle Ages? 
They didn't want all them regular people to have it. That was a pleasure for the elite. You see, you've always had your elite. You've always had your people who were given in to serve Satan. It's There's nothing new under the sun, people. It's what it says in Ecclesiastes. I believe that's the right book. There's nothing new under the sun. So anyway, let's continue. The Just forget that part if you don't believe it. He's saying if you don't believe... In other words, if you don't believe that there's going to be a rapture before the Great Tribulation, let's put it that way, he just doesn't realize that there's it's not seven years left. Okay, let's leave it at that. Gets me for the statement I made, but it's how you believe as to what you get. If you don't believe in repentance, then your garments are dirty. But That's you get true. what you believe. I believe this verse of scripture is a mandate from God to show us that we do not have to be in the hour of temptation that's to come. I woke up with this verse, Revelation chapter 3, verse 10. And because thou hast kept the word of my patience, I also will keep thee from the hour of temptation, which shall come upon all the world to try them that dwell on the earth. That's not Hallelujah. us. We're going to be kept from the hour of temptation or from the great tribulation that is coming to try people on the earth. And it is my opinion that it's going to be the vaccine. And if they're going to try to make it mandatory, it's like we don't even have a choice. So that's why I think both raptures are going to happen before they get that thing ready. So there must be something like a 40-day period between them. And I know that the book of Revelation is not written in chronological order. But some people are talking like the seals and the bold judgments and the trumpets are all like happening all at the same time. Some of those judgments if you read the book of revelation they're horrible that's wrath of god stuff and it is not appointed unto us to suffer the wrath i believe that holds true for christians who just don't quite have it right they don't they've been taught against they've been taught once saved always saved and they're good people they just need to learn, they have to repent to their sins, that the blood of Jesus does not cover your sins, past, present, and future. We have to repent of sins of the future that we do from this day forward, so to speak. From the day you're born again, you got to pick up your cross and follow Jesus. And that means doing things like repenting, praying, obeying the commandments of Jesus. He said, if you love me, you will obey my commandments, and so forth. We have to walk out our salvation with fear and trembling, so to speak. That means having enough respect for the word to know that it's true, and that if you go against it, you better fear that you will receive what you deserve. That I can tell you. But yet, if you're doing that, then the Bible says perfect love casts out fear. Okay? So if you're loving Jesus to the best of your ability, you're obeying him, you're praying, you're praising, you're staying in the word because you love him, then you should have no fear whatsoever of what's coming that we could see before we're gone. And I don't know what it could be. I know that vaccine's not coming before we're gone. I do believe we're gone by September. I was hoping this month, but the Feast of Trumpets does make sense. It could be that long, but it won't be, it won't be any longer than that. It can't be. There's 
I just don't believe it because they put up all the 5G when they closed down all the businesses and the schools. That's what they were busy doing. And we know that that is going to interact with the vaccine, which is going to be mandatory, just like in China. Okay? So, know this. If you follow the way you're supposed to live according to the Bible, you have can have no fear. You can live in perfect peace. The Bible calls it the peace that passes all understanding. You don't have to worry about, oh my goodness, is that vaccine going to get ready before we're out of here and things like that. You put all your trust in Jesus and know that he loves you. And he is not going to allow you to suffer the wrath that he has coming for those who will not accept him. They have it coming. Not those who have accepted him. Do you see? Now, the, the ones who are in the second rapture, they got to have some refining to do. They got to go through some stuff because they have not, they've been living in the world. They haven't loved Jesus most. They may love him. They may go to a church and serve the church, probably tithing and giving. But do they love him most? Do they love their neighbor as their self? Are they forgiving everybody? These are the things that Jesus is looking for in a bride. No spot, no blemish, no wrinkles. So you do a inward, what do you call that? Take an inventory of yourself and you make sure you're found worthy to escape all these things that are to come to pass and to stand before the Son of Man. We don't just escape to a little hide out in the woods we want to stand before the son of man that means being in the presence of the Lord Jesus Christ the only way to do that is to be taken up put in your glorified body and yes we come back to help I'll end it there I plead the blood of Jesus over this video and the internet connection and myself and my computer and I want to thank the one who gave me the money to renew my annual subscription for protection and do you know I did not realize that that also covered Geek Squad 27 24-7 support no wonder it's so high. Part of its web root, and I thought web root was just so good. See, when you got that coverage, they know if they mess with your computer, those guys can fix it. Because that's what's happened. I've had it messed with before, but got it fixed in like an hour. You have to give the computer over anyway. Somebody gave, praise the Lord. And I want to thank you personally for stepping up and helping me. Okay. I didn't want to do a fundraiser. So I reached out to someone and they came through. They had it and they came through. Because I knew everybody was trying, would be trying their best to help Tessa. Okay. So I plead the blood of Jesus over each and every one of you. I thank each and every one of you that helped Tessa. And that gives to me from time to time when I don't even ask for it. I thank you, each and every one of you that ever, ever has given money to me. I pray blessings abound, if not here on earth, in heaven, when you get to heaven, there will be something in your mansion that you will know is there because you helped me.
that's my prayer and you know if you helped a thousand people in your lifetime you might have a room full of gems and there will be a name under each one I don't know I don't know how Jesus has it planned out but it's going to be a reminder of what you did when you said I'm going to help that person because I would want help if I were them do unto others as you would have them do unto you I prefer to say do unto others as you would want to do unto Jesus anyway did I finish pleading the blood? I'll do it again. I plead the blood of Jesus over each and every one of you, your devices, and your internet connections. And with that, I'll say bye for now. I will talk to you again soon.